Back out on the river today, trying to spot. I've been to before. I've had some luck here. Got a few rocks here in the water. I'm just curious if any of these are packed. Every time I find rocks like this in the water, I always check them. That one felt like it was, but I think it was natural. A little foggy this morning. It's a little scary when you have to cross the river in a kayak. Although I don't think the barges run too much early in the morning in the fog like that. They might, but I haven't seen them do it. If you're new to river hunting, one thing I generally do is look at Google Earth. I'll look at the river banks, and I look for banks that have a lot of farm fields on them, not a lot of boat docks or businesses that have rip-wrapped. Rip-wrapped, big old rock they put on the banks to keep them from eroding. When they do that, they're going to stop any artifacts from eroding out of the banks. So I look at the banks on Google Earth and then just find me a boat ramp. I use Onyx Maps because it'll tell you where most of the boat ramps are. So I find me a boat ramp, preferably downstream when I'm in a kayak. That way I can paddle upstream and if I get tired, it's not as bad of a paddle back to where I'm going. So once I get on the river, I just start searching for high banks. Like you can see, this one's a pretty high bank. You can't really see the dirt because of the vegetation growing on it, but high banks like that will erode out and artifacts will end up being left behind when the dirt washes away. Then I go along the banks, paddle along in the kayak, looking for rock. If I see rock, I'll look at it a little closer and see if it's fire rock. And if, it's, if you find fire rock, you know you've found an Indian site. So you get out and start looking a little closer. But that's generally how I do it. I, I've got over 200 miles this year in my kayak cruising the banks. So I've covered quite a bit of banks up and down the Ohio. Once I find spots, I mark them with waypoints on my Onyx map so I can easily get back to them. So that's a little bit of how I do it. If somebody new is watching and is interested in river hunting. And fire rock is typically going to be reddish, dark colored sandstone that's busted up typically. Sandstone starts out as a tan brownish color, but once it's heated it turns red and moisture in it will cause it to fracture open, pop when it's heated and the pressure builds in the rock. And the reason it's sandstone is when sandstone breaks, when it fire pops, it doesn't go flying, it just kind of shat shatters into little pieces right there. If you use a hard rock and it was to ex explode in the fire, it's going to send out shrapnel. So they typically would use sandstone because it's not dangerous. So that's the key. You're looking for fire rock. When you find it, then you start looking a little closer or if the laws allow in your area, do some sifting in the water. Okay, that ought to be enough. Got some big stuff in there.
Here's a flake. And that right there is the busted up fire rock. You can see how it's reddish, reddish inside, kind of dark on the outside, fractured open. That's what you're looking for. A lot of this rock in here is just regular old river gravel. But it doesn't mean there's not artifacts mixed in with it. Looks like there's another flake. Yep. So a couple of flakes in that screen. Right, there's another one. Some of the flakes are hard to spot. You, you got to kind of keep working the rocks down, getting rid of the big stuff. And then you'll spot them. And points are the same way. You can easily miss a point if you don't work your way down. Yeah, there's another little flake of canal black. And it looks like it's fractured off of a river cobble they were working on. Okay, we'll get another screen. Okay, move down a little bit. Got me another screen here. Just starting to look it over. There's a flake. There's a big old piece that's been worked on, looks like. It looks like it could be pottery. We'll keep it just in case. There's some kind of a flake, looks like. Not anything. They were working into something, just a flake, it looks like. And you have little pieces of clay like this when you're just skimming down just deep enough, skimming across the top of the clay. Look right there what I just picked up when I was picking up that mud. You believe that? I was getting ready to pick that clay up and toss that out. Look at that. No in situ picture here because I already picked it up. Look at that. Man, I can't believe that. Sweet. Kind of a lopsided point. But I'll take it. It's like it's been resharpened, reworked on this one side into a, almost like a knife. <laughs> I, gotta, I can't believe that. I, I went to pick this clay up and get it out of there. And that shows you how these things are hard to spot. You just got to keep getting the bigger rock out and looking closely. And then you can see them and that one come close to just picking it up with that clay and tossing it. Well, I'm going to get a picture of it. Yeah, I'd say that that's this side over here that's straighter was more convex and it's been worked down. Base is ground. Point still good shape. Point overall, the uh, tip still in good shape. The point overall is in good shape. It's just had some reworking done on it. All right, I'm gonna get a picture of this one and then get another screen full back there where I got this one from. I'll lay it there for a second. I don't see anything else in here, but they are hard to see, especially if you got a small point. You really got to look close. You see, you got to be careful too because you get glass that you'll pick up. Well, yeah, there's a live find there. Didn't expect that. Okay, I'm going to get a couple pictures of it and get me another screen.
just pulled up to this spot to take a look and I believe that's a tip laying there let me get a picture of it and then we'll pull it and see okay let's grab it and see what we got yeah that would be the tip of a point you can see the clean break right there both sides worked yep, just a tip let's look around here just a little bit more Here's a little wrap up of the finds from today. Right off the bat, you saw this point that we found. That was the best find of the day. And it looks like it's been reworked on that one side. I don't know if they made it into a blade, but it definitely is kind of a lopsided looking point. A real thin point. It looks like it's had some reworking done on it. Base has been ground. There's that tip that we found. Clean break there. Not sure what kind that would have been. And some pieces of pottery. Here's some more colorful flakes that I found. And just one day I'd like to find a point made out of some of this real pretty material. Seems like most of the points I find are the darker material. Here's some pieces that look like there's a little bit of working on them, like they could have been trying to make something out of them. Not sure what that one looks like could have been trying to make a scraper out of it. But there's some more of the flint that I found. Some of the dark pieces. I just laid out some of the pretty ones there. There's still a few nice pieces in here. Kind of a translucent piece there. But just wanted to give you a little kind of how-to on finding airheads on the river this morning. Kind of how I go about doing it. And main thing is to just kind of know your laws. Uh, saying somebody on YouTube said I can do this isn't really going to fly in the courts. So get to know your laws. Um, hope this helps some of you if you're looking to get out on the rivers and do a little searching. Give you an idea of what to look for when you're heading out. Kind of give you a starting point anyway. Uh, that'll wrap it up for today. I'll get this little bottle too. I don't know if it's really anything or not. I kept it. Looks like now it's drying out some. You seeing some scratches in it that I didn't see earlier. But it's a cork top type bottle, so I brought it home. May end up in the trash, but we'll see. Alright, thanks for watching folks. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe.